Hello everyone, my name is Ilya and you are watching my YouTube channel where I share some useful information, some technical tips. Today we will be talking about spoofing and in particular how to block spam from your own domain. In context of email security spoofing attack when someone sends an email using someone else's email address. By default Exchange Online has some anti-spam and anti-phishing checks, but they are not tough enough. As a result, you can see in your mailbox emails supposedly written by your supervisor or other employees. How to enhance spoofing checks, I will tell you in this video. First of all, accept the fact that on the internet all mail goes anonymously. We cannot authenticate senders when mail is forwarded between different companies. What does it mean? It means that any sender can give any sender's address when he sends you an email. And of course it can be done to deceive or confuse you. In my practice I have seen many cases where attackers wrote to an employee on behalf of his manager, natured through the substitution of the sender's address. With the default Exchange Online settings such spoofing messages will be delivered to junk folder, at best. At worst, users will have them in their mailbox. Let's fix it. Ok, how we protect ourselves from spoofing and most of all from spoofing our domain. The first thing you should do is check if we have SPF record. The SPF record is a text DNS record that tells the validating system how is allowed to send on behalf of your email domain. More precisely which mail servers can send mails on behalf of your domain. This txt record must be added to the external DNS zone of your domain. The syntax of entry is very simple. The entry can include AP addresses, subnets, server names that can send on behalf of your domains. The point is that the receiving party has to look at where the email came from and compare it with your SPF record. In case of mismatch, to block such email. Sometimes an entry may link to another entry and the record that is referenced already contains the data. If you are using Exchange Online, you don't need to think about what SPF record should look like. The link in the bottom left corner will take you to a page that specifies how the DNS records for your domain should look like, and in particular the SPF record. So, the first step passes, you have checked that your domain have an SPF record and this record is correct. The next step is to check DKIM configuration. DKIM is another mechanism to protect against spoofing. DKIM is a standard email authentication method that adds a digital signature to outgoing emails. It's very simple if you understand how digital signatures work. In simple words, it works as follows. Two keys are generated. The private key is stored on your server. The public key is available to anyone from the Internet. What is encrypted with the private key can be decrypted with the public key. The sending server adds a DKIM's digital signature to an email and receiving server using an open key available on the internet verifies it. Of course the receiving side must know how to check the DKIM and the sending side must have DKIM configured. Exchange Online supports DKIM and all you have to do is to check if DKIM is configured for your domains. If you are not sure if DKIM is configured, the easiest way to check is to use PowerShell. If get DKIM signing config CMLED doesn't give you similar information, then DKIM has not configured for your domain. So you have to run new DKIM signing config for your email domain and as a result the keys will be generated for you. You don't work with keys directly. All you have to do is to write two entries to the external DNS zone, indicating how external systems can access 
the public keys. After you have added these DNS records, you must enable DKIM for your domain. After setting up, you can send an email to any another system and then see the headers of that email afterwards. In the header of your email, you should see that digital signature of the DKIM has been verified. So, the second step is done. We made sure that our emails contain the DKIM signature. So, DMARC. DMARC means Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. Email sender authentication policy based on DKIM and SPF protocols. The policy specifies how the recipient's mail servers should handle incoming mail if the sender's address cannot be identified, cannot be verified, etc. In particular, if the SPF check failed or there is no DKIM signature. For our email domains, we have to create another text DNS entry. This entry will tell other systems that we recommend to do if mail from our domain doesn't pass DKIM O and SPF checks. If our emails pass these checks, of course they will be delivered to the recipients. And if not, we recommend that you do as the record says. My DMARC record says that such emails should be sent to the spam folder or current time mailbox. So, if you have SPF record, DKIM and DMARC record configured, all we have to do, we need to change the Exchange Online policy a little bit. To do this, we need to open Microsoft Defender for Office 365 and find the anti-spam policy. In the anti-spam policy, we need to get Microsoft 365 Defender for Office 365 to take situations where mail is delivered from servers not listed in records. More seriously, such messages will definitely be marked as spam. After you have made all changes, the easiest way to check the result is to send an email to yourself from someone's strange AP address using Telnet. Such emails will probably not deliver it and will be quarantined. But if you get it out of quarantine and look at the headers, you will see that it will fail all checks and the SQL rating is 9. 9 means high confidence spam and such emails will definitely not be delivered to the users. The fate of these emails will depend on Microsoft Defender for Office 365 settings. But usually emails with such SQL rating are deleted or quarantined. As Exchange Online administrators, we can determine what to do with messages that fail checks. Usually messages are quarantined. Don't confuse quarantine with junk email. Quarantine is a special repository that keeps controversial messages for one month. And we can allow normal users to view and work with quarantine. And the user can pull the email out of quarantine, for example. To summarize the above, if you want to protect yourself from phishing, whether it's from your domain or someone else, you need to. The first one. Check that your domains have SPF record and that your SPF record is correct. Point number two. Check that your domains have DKIM and your messages are signed. Point number three. Check that DMARC policy is set up for your domain. And the last one. Check that Defender for Office 365 reacts hard to mail that conflicts with SPF records. Thank you for watching me and if you have any questions, write me in the comments, I will be glad to answer them. See you later!